it's that time. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the cheap Crayola pencils and the more expensive Prismacolor pencils. I hope you're ready, so let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here. And after my realism attempt with crayons, you guys wanted to see me use the Crayola Colors of the World pencils as well. I have them here. And since this is a portrait set of pencils, I'm going to compare them to the Prismacolor portrait set. They're both white space pencils, so not only are we comparing the cost and the quality, we're also going to compare the color range. Obviously, I'm happy the Crayola is included in all these additional tones. What about the purples? What about the greens? What about the blues? What about them? We're gonna see today if that makes a difference. So I'm excited. Pause the video now. Who do you think is going to win this comparison? Leave a comment down below and we'll see who wins at the end. So I'm going to start with the cost comparisons and the swatches. So here is the Crayola Colors of the World set and it comes in this cardboard box. You can see the color swatches on the sides and I'm so impressed with this color range already. This pack of 24 retails for around $6, which comes to 25 cents per pencil. And here are all the colors. I've quickly put it in order and they're grouped from the rose, almond and then golden. On first impressions, I wish they went further with some colours, like putting more yellows in the golden group and having more secondary colours that will really bring the portraits to life, you know? However, saying that, compared to just having one beige and one brown in a normal set, I am here for this diversity. And here are the swatches. To be fair, I think Crayola have done a great job to capture loads of different skin tone base colours. But honestly, I'm worried about the depth these colours can really bring for me. I like this deep rose, it's probably the most out of the box colour here, but a lot of these browns are very samey and even unnecessary to me. I know this set is not aimed at professionals, but I will still be comparing it like for like to the Prism colour set to see if it's a good purchase if you're interested in realism. And here is the Prismacolor portrait set. So this is also a set of 24, but you probably instantly notice how much more vibrant these colours are. This Prismacolor Premier Portrait Pack of 24 retails for around $50, which is just over $2 per pencil. I've had this set for many years, so unfortunately a lot of these pencils are worse for wear. I don't even think I've got 24 in here. <laughs> okay, that's right, I've got 21. I'm just going to quickly head into my big set and using the colour numbers on the back, here are the three I'm missing. And so here is the full range of this portrait set. For the pencils that are too short, I'll put it in a pencil extender so that I can use them properly. By the way, all my supplies are linked down in the description and I've also linked my Amazon store to all of my faves. And here are the swatches. So I really love this range. I definitely prefer it to Crayola's bland set. But is it just me or are there too many yellows in the set? I feel like we're missing out on some medium skin tone shades. We have a couple of lights and some browns, but that seems to be it. We have many pinks and a few reds. I really love the inclusion of this indigo blue and this salmon pink. Also, they definitely went out of the box by including this bright pink. So I'm here for some of these secondary colours. And I barely use whites for the skin on my portraits, but I'm still happy they included one. I would have definitely liked some more purples and even a green, but I'm still happy with this colour range, so let's do some testing. Now I'm going to conduct a series of tests as a side-by-side -side comparison of the two brands. I'm starting with an opacity blend and I'm trying to blend out from a solid colour point through a seamless transition into a light area. How well it does on this test can give me an indicator of how well some of the blending tests could go. For Crayola, this is the darkest shade they provide, but is it just me or it's not looking that dark? It's a little bit worrying that I can't really get to a very opaque pigmented point, but it's quite easy to go very light, so I guess it passes this test. For Prisma, I'm able to get to the darkest point a lot quicker. So this is promising, it means I'm not going to sleep here <laughs> when it's time to colour it. But I can see the Prisma has a harder time with the lightest points. And even after increasing the opacity on one side, I can still see the whites of the page through. That's a bit worrying. There are a few things to consider. My pencil might not be sharp enough or it might just be the surface of the paper. But yeah, that's the end of the opacity test. And now for the blend test. I'm going to do a simple two color blend and I'm using very light rose and deep rose. I made a conscious effort of including a light color and a dark color because that's when we'll see if it's really gonna blend. The blend method I'm using here is called layering and I'm not going to talk through it in this video because I have a full video breaking the entire thing down. I'll link it up in the cards and down below. 
but to be honest I'm quite disappointed with Crayola's blend. To be fair I'm not judging it too hard because I probably could get a smoother blend if I used more transitionary colours like you know those in between shades but yeah this blend is pretty disappointing. And for Prisma, I mean, look at the smoothness. It was so much easier to blend these colors. It almost fills in those in-between shades for you with the way the pigments just come together. And I'm sure you can appreciate how much nicer this blend is on the right. I hope people aren't thinking I'm being biased against Crayola. If you saw my last cheap versus expensive eye, you'd probably realize that those pencils seem to perform better than these colors of the world pencils. I don't know why that is, but let's move on to the solvent test. I really want to try using a solvent because I found that it actually helps to blend cheaper pencils. I've used Crayola pencils a few times on my channel and a solvent has definitely helped it to perform better. So I'm going to put a fair layer of colour down and this is the solvent I'll be using, it's the Zest Dip Pencil Blend and oh, <laughs> I really had to spill it. <laughs> anyway, it's going to dry clear so I'm not bothered about this but that's the solvent down for layer one and I'll do a couple more layers but for now let's try the same with the Prismacolor side. And I'm doing the exact same thing of just trying to get as much pigment down as possible with a little bit of blending and then using the solvent over the top. And to be honest, at the moment, I'm not liking either blend. If you're a regular subscriber, you know that I'm not a big fan of solvents in general, but applying more color, the darker color seems to layer better over the blend. And a few layers later, this is the blend. I actually prefer the blend without the solvent. So the layering test we did earlier, but let me know which blend is your fave. Okay, now drawing time, the time you've all been waiting for. So I'm going to attempt a half and half realistic drawing of this reference and I've already done my sketch off camera. I'm going to be transferring it into my sketchbook as usual using a graphite transfer sheet and a biro. And here is what the sketch is looking like. The lines always come out pretty dark, so I'm erasing it. Now we can get on with the colouring. The eyes in this reference needs colours that are not provided in the portrait set. So I've gone into the basic Crayola set with all of those extra colours and I've just picked out the blue, an aqua blue slash green colour, a white, a grey and a black. This is just so that I make sense in context of the reference. I think the real test and comparison lies in the colouring of the skin. So I'll only be using the colours of the world set for the skin. But it's important for me to have the eyeliner as the darkest value, which is the black. And it really helps me to guide how dark I can go with the skin. Because it just basically puts the drawing in context. Now colouring the skin. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but this was a mess. <laughs> an absolute travesty. <laughs> My idea is to use some darker browns as an underlayer almost and then to layer with the lighter colours and to just go in with different layers of different colours, you know, adding some more darker colours in the shadowed area and then using the lightest colour to burnish at the end. But I can tell you that this was an absolute mess. I kind of knew it would be a mess and that's kind of why I chose this picture intentionally. I love to challenge myself. And I wasn't really seeing some of the colors that would make the story make sense. I was like, oh, let me try that. I really wanted to understand how the bright pink blush would blend into the rest of the face. You know, how to get a good medium skin tone covering. And now I'm at the point where I'm trying to layer the lightest color and guess what? It is not layering. So I'm forced to try using a solvent to see if it will help it blend so that I can layer more over the top. So I've got some of the solvent in the lid and it seems to be blending it a little bit. You know, some of the harsh strokes are gone, which is encouraging. But yeah, now I'm trying to layer more color over the top. And this is so disappointing. I mean, nothing is happening. <laughs> I think the only thing I can do is to start over. And guys, honestly, I've never had to. I've never had to leave a drawing halfway to start over because it was beyond saving. I've always been able to persevere, but nothing can work if nothing can layer over the top. Right now, I'm not completely blaming Crayola for this because I think the sketchbook is the biggest culprit here. The sketchbook I'm using is my Artisan Mixed Media Pad and I love this sketchbook. I use it very often, but I'm just going to go back into this other sketchbook. And it's the same one I used for the half and half eye last time. So I'm just going to transfer the sketch again quickly and let's try for round two. Actually, here's a point. Imagine if I had done the sketch directly into that first sketchbook. Does that mean I'll now have to start resketching? Yeah, I'm very happy I did the sketch on a separate bit of paper and I can easily transfer it again to just hit the ground running. I'm going to do the same thing of starting with the eyes and putting in the darkest value of the eyeliner to help me. And then I'm lightly mapping out some shadow areas with the brown. 
the idea is to build up the layers gradually and I think it's easier to start with the mid-tones and then to build the colours into the shadowed areas and then the highlight areas. The goal is to get to an opaque point at the end with all of the final colours fully burnished so that I can't see any whites of the paper through. The other sketchbook didn't take enough layers before it decided to clock out of the shift. It said job done, <laughs> I'm going home. But as you can see, this sketchbook is already doing a better job. I'll have to wait to see if I need some assistance with the solvent, but for now it's just time to build the colours gradually. And my biggest fear with this Crayola side is actually getting a smooth blend with the Crayolas. From the blend test, I doubt I'll be able to get to a really smooth point and that's just because of how hard the Crayola lead is. I'll keep layering and layering until the paper says no more. Now that I've got the skin looking presentable, I'm going to attempt some details, so finishing up the eyeliner and the lashes and the eyebrows. If you're a regular subscriber, you know that I usually lean on other supplies like markers or fine liners for these kinds of details. But today I thought, hmm, let me just be fair and compare it like for like. So just whatever creator is bringing and whatever Prisma is bringing. So I'm not using any of these extras. Actually, that's a lie. The only extra I will be using is a white pen because I'm so sorry to everybody, but this is a must for your collection. If you want to know all of my fave color pencil must have supplies, I'll link the video in the cards. But yeah, this is what the Crayola face side is looking like. And to be honest, I'm not mad at it. Especially compared to the dusty, ashy one from earlier. <laughs> I think we've actually been able to come up with something that's kind of cute. So now for the expensive side. So I'm going to make it fair and I'm reaching into my big Prisma colour set for the same extra colours that I chose for the eyes. So I'm trying to match the colours as closely as I can. And here's what I've got. So for this side, you already know I'm expecting great things. I'm not accepting anything but the best because you know Prismas really be doing the damn thing. Prism colours have a soft core and they blend amazingly. So I'm already excited to attempt a nice blend on this side. But what is most exciting me, what's most ginger in me, are all of those extra colours. You know, the burgundy, the pinks, the blue. I'm expecting nothing short of magic, to be honest. And I'm tackling this in a very similar way. So starting by mapping the main colours and the shadows and just layering. By the way, if you're new to colour pencil work, especially for portraits, I've got loads of videos on my channel and I've got loads of different methods I go with my colouring pencil. So I talk through the entire process and I give you loads of tips, so I'm sure you enjoy. So I'll link my portrait drawing playlist on the screen. And generally, I don't advise this technique of just using colouring pencils on its own. I much prefer using a base like markers or pan pastels. And then it's much easier to layer the highlights and the shadows from that point and to just get to a good smooth skin layer instead of trying to achieve it only using the pigment from the pencils. But as I'm building the layers, I'm constantly comparing it to the reference. So does it need to be warmer? Okay, I'll add some more golden tones. Does it need to be softer? Okay, I'll add some more beige. For the shadows, I'm layering in the light umber and I'm using that indigo blue for the deeper shadows. So like under the bottom lip. In fact, look at the shadows on the nose compared to the Crayola side. They're just richer overall because I didn't just pick a dark brown. What adds the vibrancy and dimension to your drawing is how you layer all of these extra colours. So already I'm seeing major differences with the Crayola side. The more I'm layering on the Prisma side, the more flat the Crayola side is looking. And then there's the biggest difference, which is the blend. But obviously that was to be expected. And adding the white highlights really just helps to elevate the drawing. The white highlights is probably one of my favourite parts of the drawing because, you know, that extra shine, that glow, we're here for it. The Crayola's face side took me just over two hours in total, I think two hours, 15 minutes. But the Prismacolor side took me four hours. Can you believe it? To be fair, I was a little bit distracted. I was on FaceTime with my sisters. <laughs> And I guess that kind of helps with persevering through the drawing because during the drawing when it was going through the ugly phase I could have easily given up but during my drawings I like to watch things so pick a tv show, find a podcast, listen to music, the time will really fly. And this wasn't me giving preferential treatment to the Prismacolor side by spending more time, it was just that Crayla literally said this is the end, you cannot and shall not add any more layers over the top but I probably could have kept going with the Prismacolor blend side. So that's just a testament to how good the Prismacolor pencils are. Now for the rest of the piece. 
I'm going to do the hair around the neck of each side and and once again, I'll be using the black that wasn't included in either of the sets for the hair, but then for the neck. So all of the skin detail, I'll default back to only the colors that are included in the Colors of the World set and the Prismacolor portrait set. The only extra thing I added was a red and you see me using that in a bit for the chopstick detail. But what I want to highlight here is the ear. I don't love drawing ears if I'm going to be real, but I find that it's one of those where you just have to trust where the shadows are going. It's always looking weird, the shapes, everything looking a bit oblong and then the ear materializes from nowhere. <laughs> I'm not mad at it, but it's just one of those, ugh. However, with this one, I really struggled and I realized it's because of the lack of shadow colors. I think that's just a running theme throughout this Crayola side. I'm really missing the purples. I'm really missing the blues, you know, to get that deepest, deepest shadows to just enhance the contrast. I feel like the ear would have turned out so much better if I had those. Now finishing up the neck, this is another case of I'm missing the shadow colors. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it too much. I've probably already talked about it too much. I apologize. But once again, the deep roses have come to the rescue, but it's not great. It's not enough if I'm going to be real. And the rest of the neck just comes out pretty flat because when you're just layering brown on top of brown on top of brown on top of brown, even if it's different shades of almond, it's just still like no dimension, just vibes. Anywho, and now for the Prismacolor side, something you might be able to realize is that the Prismacolor Black is much more pigmented than Crayola, and it might be easier to see this on the eyeliner actually, but I'm just quickly doing the hair and earring detail on this side, and now we can move on to the neck. This is where the Prismas really stand out in my opinion. That first burgundy shade, it is the perfect base to build up on for this side. Guys, I don't even know what to tell you because I don't know where this neck came from, but it just materialized and huh, I'm not mad at this. As I layer more browns and yellows and so on, it just really comes alive. Like, please look at this neck compared to Crayola. Crayola is just looking childish. And I know this isn't a professional set of colors, but I think we probably could have still achieved something more vibrant if we had those supplementary colors in this basic Crayola set. And maybe that's something I should try in the future. So actually just doing a full portrait piece with just Crayola. So the Crayola colors of the world and the normal Crayola color set and see if we can come out with something vibrant and cute. But for this drawing, Prisma is just looking much more eye-catching and that's how I like my work to look. In total, this drawing took 10 hours, so that's not including the two hours of wasted time <laughs> on that first one that I had to scrap, but I am happy with how it turned out. So guys, we made it to the end. Shout out to you for still being here. Let me know which side you think won. Although I do think they both look good, it's clear to see Crayola's limitations for me. You know, the blend and the lack of the supplementary colors. I wanted to do a fair comparison of the 24 colors in their portrait set versus the 24 colors in the Prismacolor portrait set. And if you're still wondering which one you should get, um, I would say if you're an aspiring artist, maybe at an intermediate level, then definitely go for the Prismacolor portrait set. It's a great starting point and they provide all of these extra colors that initially you might be a bit baffled as to what to do with them, but it really adds to the drawing. And I hope this video has given you an idea of how well these extra colors really help. It might be a lot for you initially, but with practice, you definitely get there. However, if you're in a budget, 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 I guess you could get the Crayola Colors of the World set, but please only buy it if you're also buying the main Crayola other set with the extra colors because brown and brown and brown is just gonna give you a flat drawing. Also worry about your sketchbook. The mess of the first sketchbook I used, I hope it shows you how much difference the actual sketchbook paper makes for the coloring process. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative, but also entertaining for you. I've got loads of drawing tutorials on this channel. So stick around, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next one. Goodbye.